All right, everybody. All right, this is Zane from Really Easy AI. Long pause there. Took me a second to think about where I was at. Um, we are doing part two. And so we're going to get into part two of the um, mastering uh, prompt engineering so that we can get you through this and then get you some examples and kind of see how this all, all works. So here we go. Uh, so now we had left off where we had done all the co-star pieces. So if you want to get into that, go watch. If you haven't yet watched, of course, the previous video. Now we're going to talk about other things that go into the co-star method, like delimiters. You will want to use delimiters. All right. Why use delimiters? Delimiters are special tokens that help the LLM distinguish which parts of your prompt you should consider as a single unit of meaning. It breaks up the prompt, which arrives to the LLM as a single long sequence of tokens. So, you know, and I've shown this prior, whenever you type a bunch of stuff, it's just this big, long sequence of tokens. By having consistent, repeatable tokens to break up the stuff, it helps the LLM. It provides structure to the sequence of tokens by sectioning off specific parts of your prompt to be treated differently. And here's a part that I didn't add. It helps you as a human. It really, really does help you as a human kind of make sense of the prompt by chunking it up in this way, right? That's what the co-star method is really all about. It's to help humans craft these things. All right, so are delimiters really that important? Well, it kind of depends, right? If you're doing a really, really small prompt, something quick and dirty, no, not really. Um, but if you're doing production level prompts, where you need to have a lot of stuff going on, or even not so much stuff going on, really, then yes, it, it, it helps. Uh, it doesn't detract anything from... So, so here's where I really kind of have a, a bone to pick with, with some of the prompt engineer people out there. They'll say, well, you don't do this because you don't get anything out of it. Okay, well, yes and no, right? Certainly adding delimiters to a smaller prompt doesn't add anything, but it doesn't necessarily take anything away either, right? It, it adds a few extra tokens, but they're not confusing tokens. They're, it's not like adding a bunch of BS that would confuse the LLM. They're very clearly delimiters, so it's not adding to the confusion of the LLM. So while you may not have any gains you know, computationally, there are still gains to be had, particularly as a human, for organization of your prompt. And, and that's kind of where I'm coming from on that. All right, so what are delimiters? Well, they're basically any sequence of special characters that usually wouldn't appear together. Um, the number and type of special characters really doesn't matter. Just make sure they're fairly unique. As long as they are unique enough, you're fine. Uh, here's some examples I give, and I'm going to show you the patterns that I use. Uh, you can use uppercase letters, you can use symbols, various combinations, and I actually use a combination of both. Uh, I find that it helps me the most. Now, for those of you who saw my last or any of my other prompt engineering uh, courses, but particularly the one before this, you may have realized something. There's something distinctly missing here, and that's XML. Uh, it, prior, I had advocated or at least had not disabused you of using XML tags. In the intervening time, I found that XML tags tend to confuse the LLM a little bit. I, I, I really don't think that they add value. In fact, I found that if I take the same prompt and use the delimiters I'm going to show you and then use XML, that the XML tends to confuse the large language model sometimes, and I get weird results. So I've actually stopped using XML as my delimiters uh, for that very reason. Now, you're welcome to experiment with XML if you want. Give it a shot. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's an ML is like any ML. You have your open tags and your closed tags and stuff in the middle. Uh, but I do not advocate the use of XML, at least for prompt engineering with ChatGPT. All right, so let's put it all together. So here is, if we were to take all of, I guess, I think number one, I think this is number one, uh, or is this number three? I forget which one this is. I think this is number one. So if we were to take all of one of the examples I've given you, you can see here the delimiters I use. Notice I use a hash, a space, very consistent, hash, space, 
context, then space hash, and then something in the middle, and then a whole series of hashes, which is always the same length, by the way. Um, you know, I just just kind of hold down the hash key. I don't even know how many are here, but I make sure I have that same amount over. I just copy and paste over and over and over again. It doesn't matter how many you have. What matters is it, it is consistent throughout. It has to be consistent. The LLM is depending on that consistency. And so you see here, you can see I have the context, and then I have some context, I have the objective, and then I have the objective, emotion, life or death, right? Uh, and notice I have a beginning, some a body, and the very clear end to each of my sections. This is the way you want to do it. Uh, style, got this, and then close. Again, beginning, end, very consistent. Hash, space, space, hash, something, bunch of hashes, hash, space, space, hash, something, bunch of hashes, over and over and over again. That continues. All right? I've only shown you half because I couldn't fit it all in one. It's too small. So here we have tone, same thing, audience, got it, response, got it. So that is, or this is the pattern I suggest you adopt. And notice I'm mixing up the hashtags with the uppercase uh, um, in this particular case. I find that that, for me at least, that seems to work. It makes it easier for me as a human too when I'm dealing with a lot of stuff. So this is how I organize uh, my, uh, my prompts. Uh, by the way, real quick, just a side note, and I'm gonna show you some prompts, we're gonna go through some of them. I have updated my prompt Craftsman GPT for those who aren't aware of it. I did create a GPT called Prompt Craftsman, here it is. And the Prompt Craftsman GPT has been updated to include uh, most of the techniques that are here. I think almost all of them. Uh, so let's see here, create a prompt for a story about alien life in space. Yeah, there you go. It, it, uh, it sometimes will add these extra pieces and sometimes will leave off like the ends. Notice how it's leaving off the hashtags. I haven't got it quite consistent yet. I probably just need to do a few shot examples. I just hadn't got around to doing it, but it'll give you essentially what you need and then you can tweak it a little bit. Uh, this whole begin prompt, end prompt thing is unnecessary. And then notice it ends the prompt and adds emotion after that. <laughs> and by the way, where you put emotion doesn't really matter. You can have it at the end. You can have it where I told you to put it. You can rearrange these. It's not that big a deal because they're sections. So they don't flow like a program sequentially. You can put them in any order you want. It's just we've kind of come to accept this order for things. All right, so I have updated the Prompt Craftsman, though, and the link is in the um, uh, on this slide for those who want to use the Prompt Craftsman to help you create prompts for stuff. Now, having said that, let's take a look at some prompts. So here we go. I've got a ton of prompts. Uh-oh, let's try this. It helps if I resize them a little bit. The screen size is all kinds of funky, uh, so I can make it easier to record for you guys because a lot of you didn't like my screen sizes. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can, oh, no, nope, still got it. Do a little here. Should have had this done ahead of time, shouldn't I? There we go. Okay, there we go. Now we got a fitting in there. All right, so you can see some CoStar examples. Let's take that, uh, the one that I really liked that had all that uh, good detail in it. Um, so I, I give you a, just a boatload of examples here. You can see it's just a ton of them. Uh, 464 lines of examples. So we'll take this first one. I'm just gonna grab it. Notice we have the context, uh, which this one actually technically is number two in a slide deck, by the way. Notice I have the emotion, uh, very important in my career, although I've got an extra something there. I'll fix that. Uh, okay, all right, let's grab it again. Na -na 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 -na. Important in my career, style, tone, audience, response. And then this is the one I included it because it had an extra section called start analysis. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to head over to ChatGPT, start a new chat session, and put it to the test. Let's see if you know if this works the way we expect it to. And so you put it in. And it says, I understand your objectives, the importance of your task to your career. Let's begin the process of creating a comprehensive system converter. Please share your goals with me so we can tailor the steps effectively for your needs. Okay, my goals. I want to uh, stop drinking beer. I really don't, but we'll tell. We'll say that's it. 
Give your goals, stop drinking beer. We'll outline a step-by-step -step system converter designed to help you transform, and away we go. So the prompt is working pretty darn well. And adding that extra, ask me about my goals, was important in this case for this particular prompt because it needed to know what our goals were before we could proceed. So again, like I said before, feel free to add extra sections that are meaningful for the prompt. If the prompt needs information, then make sure to add an extra section for information. If you want to do few shot type stuff, make sure to give us some examples. Let me see if I can find one of those. So here it's just cranking. You see it's doing a pretty good job here. Uh, I'll let you play with it, tweak it. Again, the success or fail of the prompt really isn't the fault of the CoStar method. It's going to be the body that you put inside of it. CoStar is solid. CoStar is proven. And me adding the extra E is just going to give you better results. But what it comes down to is the meat you put inside of that thing, right? What are you putting inside using the CoStar method? All right, so that's one example. Now, let me show you another example here because I want to kind of point out some of the highlights. So another example, uh, let's see here. I want to find one that has some examples. Uh, this is one, I included this one, the one with security. I included that. That's actually the prompt for my uh, prompt craftsman. It doesn't have the files and stuff for reference, but it shows you what I did for my prompt craftsman. It literally is using this prompt. Um, so I thought you guys might want to see that because it was an example of how to protect your GPT uh, that I'd showed earlier. Now there's some more in here. Uh, I had some in here. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, wait a bit. Did I just repeat the start analysis? Uh-oh, I think I may have done that one twice. Oh, well. It may be a duplicate. That's fine. Um, let's see. I want to advertise my company's use product. Okay, so I included a bunch of those. Uh, da, da, da. This, one, this one's kind of cool. I just included a little more complex approach. Let's see here. So one of these I know I put some, uh, I wanted to put an extra section called examples because I wanted to show some few shot stuff. Somewhere in here, I'm pretty sure I did. I'm going to scroll on down. Let's see, response. So most of them are pretty standard stuff. Uh, let's see, come on. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Where are you hiding? I know I got some in here with examples. I, there we go. Okay, here we go. I found one. Examples. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this one right here. So here, um, I'll walk you through it in a second. Let me just grab it. Okay. All right, so let's get it in here. All right, let's walk through it. So context, uh, we're excited to introduce Time Wizard, a groundbreaking time management app that revolutionizes how individuals and professionals organize their day. All right, great. Objective, your task is to create an engaging email campaign aimed at busy professionals, highlighting the benefits of Time Wizard and how it can help them reclaim their time. Emotion, every second counts. See, I kind of played with the emotion on this one. Uh, I didn't do life or death. I thought I'd have fun with it. Uh, you can t play with it. Have fun with it. Every second counts, and without proper management, we're all at risk of falling behind. Maybe not quite as emotionally compelling as life or death, so you might want to change it to life or death, but I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. Um, style. The style should be engaging and direct with a focus on the app's unique selling points and how to address common time management. The tone should be upbeat and professional, still in confidence in the reader. The time wizard is the solution. Audience. The target audience is professionals across various industries uh, that struggle with time management. I know we all do. Response. A series of email templates that succinctly describe time wizard's feature. So we're going to do this mailer, right? We're going to do some digital mailing. Um, uh, the uh, succinctly describe Time Wizard's features, benefits, and a call to action, encouraging a sign up for a free trial. Very nice. Here's some examples. So this is where I'm doing few shot examples, right? Imagine starting your day already knowing exactly what you need to do and when. That's the power of Time Wizard. Blah blah blah. So here I include examples. Now I might have taken a step further and included you maybe you know uh, uh, subject and then the body and that sort of thing. Uh, I didn't do that in this case, but you can do whatever examples you want. This is just, you know, one example of how you would approach it. The point being that I added this extra section, although it looks like it did not include 
the ending parts. Oh, that sucks. Well, I'll leave it off for now, but uh, it should have included the ending parts. I think when I was generating some of these, it didn't. So make sure to include that before you rerun it. It should run okay. It's not the end of the world, particularly because it's at the end here. So let's see what we get. So we're going to run it and see if we can sell our time wizard. There we go. Email one. Subject. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Dear, see, we didn't include subject examples, and we should have. Uh, dear, blah, blah, blah. Are you tired of feeling why the time wizard? So you see how it's kind of laying it out? It's doing everything we told it to do. It's actually really well, working really well. Email two, features highlight. What was email one? Introduction to time wizard. Email two, features highlight. Dive deeper to time wizard. So this is a series. Now, we might correct it. Maybe we wanted a series. Maybe we didn't want a series. Uh, I think in our case, we did actually want a series. So it's fine here. But if we don't like the series, we can say make each email different in some way or whatever it is we're trying to achieve. All right. So the point being, though, and the thing I want you to uh, understand is that <clears throat> even though we have CoStar, you can add extra pieces to it. Right, let me at least fix this one. My OCD won't let, let it go. So um, you can add extra pieces to it, whatever they happen to be. Examples is definitely going to be one that you add a lot of, particularly if you're trying to do few shot prompting, things of that nature. So don't be shy about adding extra sections. But, and here's the but, make sure you're adhering to CoStar initially. C-O-E-S-T-A-R, right? Get that, get that in there. Get your context, get your objective, get your emotion, get your style, get your tone, get your audience, get your response. Then you can add extra sections in there if you need to, if they're appropriate for the kind of uh, for the kind of prompt that you're gonna do. Go nuts! I've got tons of examples in here for you. Have fun with it, and really just experiment. It this is going to be an iterative process. You're not going to get it right out of the gate. Nobody does. You're gonna come up with what you think is right. You're gonna be all happy because you think you got it 100 percent right. You're gonna run it. It's not going to be perfect. Or here's the thing you got to watch out for. You'll run it the first time, and maybe it is perfect. Maybe it's perfect. But then you'll run it the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the tenth time. And you're going to do it at least ten times. Run these things at least ten times to make sure it's consistently giving you the result you want, or at least pretty close to it. It's an LLM. It's never going to be perfect. Now, there are some things that we can do with the API that we can't do in ChatGPT. When we get, uh, for those of you who are keeping track of using the OpenAI API, we'll use things like temperature and frequency and things of that nature to actually um, have the LLM be a little more precise about what it's giving us or a little more creative, depending on how we wanna, how we wanna play with it. So, but that's things that we have when we're doing programming. When we're not doing programming, when we're just doing ChatGPT through the interface, this is what we have to work with, and it works pretty well. Using the CoStar, you can achieve just about any result you want to achieve. Again, it's a proven method. It's been done over and over and over again. Give it a shot, you know, see what you got. Let's, uh, let's pick one of these real quick. Maybe a shorter one here. Uh, da, da, da. I want to advertise. Here we go. These uh, little Facebook posts. Yeah, here we go. The alpha hair dryer. Let's do one of these. So let's do the alpha hair dryer Facebook post example. Um, I think it's a good one to, to focus in on. So here we'll do the alpha dryer. Just press enter. And it says, okay, and it's going to crank a little Facebook post. Here's a Facebook post draft, blah, blah, blah. Introducing revolutionary alpha. Are you tired of the endless wait? And so what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll say, okay, great, looks pretty good. Are we happy with the with the positioning of the um, um, emojis? Are we okay with the text? I mean, it's actually coming, looking pretty good here. All right, purchase now, limited time offer, uh, great. Although that's a weird thing going on there. We probably need to give it a, a URL that it can consume uh, that that would fix that in fact why don't we do that i think let's see here is that what we uh, da, da, da. yeah the response needs to 
um, uh, include a URL to HTTPS really easy AI. All right, so uh, for uh, the uh, call to action. There we go. All right, blah, blah, blah. Did we tell it to include CTA in this? Uh, alpha, create a Facebook post which aims to get people to click on the product link. Oh, here we go. Here's the link, the product link. Okay, so uh, actually here's what we need to modify then. We'll just take this out and we needed to tell it what the product link is, right? So get people click on the product link. Here is the product link. And we might ought have include this down at the bottom. We probably could have taken this part out, um, but it's it's okay here too. You, can, you, don't, you don't have to be totally anal retentive about it, but I'll say here's the product link. Uh, really easy dot AI there we go that should work all right um, looking good let's see if it now includes the product link the way we expect it to so we're gonna let it go I'm gonna take a sip of beer while it's generating okay looking good yep icons are pretty consistent elevate your hair experience looking good Click here. There it is. There's our link right there. There we go. Really easy AI. Now we might get creative and have it put it in some words or something, but it it does it. Click here to transform your hair care routine. Blah. There we go. Yay. Much better. So now we just rerun that, right? And to rerun it, all you got to do is click on regenerate, and it just does it again and again and again. And then you definitely want to keep checking it out over and over and over just to make sure it's giving you pretty consistent results. Now, at this point, we've run this thing about three times. The results are pretty darn consistent. What's our emotional appeal on this one? Uh, my career depends on this. Okay, it's, it's one of the better ones. Here we go, Explore Beta Now. There's that link. Pretty cool. So it's, it's mixing up the link a little bit, but I don't see that as a problem in this case. If we wanted it to be a certain way, we might, in the response section, say the you know present the link in a particular way but i don't, I don't have a problem with this let's go with uh, let's do it again okay given the critical nature of this task you see what is hang on let me stop this for a second do you see here it says given the critical nature of this task because i gave it the emotional appeal this is what it thinks right it it believes there's something big on the line and that's why we're getting these very good consistent results one of one of the reasons right it's not the only reason of course because we we structured things pretty well but you can tell the llm believes there's you know this is important and if the llm like a person believes it's important or there's something on the line it's going to perform better than if it doesn't believe that i know it seems weird right you're saying to yourself well, wait a minute it's just a bunch of freaking tokens doing a prediction i know i hear you but it makes a difference. It really does. We were given an emotional appeal and we're seeing improvements. You can see that it understands it at some level. That's the part that's going on. When we achieve AGI, it's going to be even more pronounced, right? Artificial general intelligence. Then we'll have like the equivalent of a, you know, a, a, an adult or a child that we can manipulate emotionally even more to get better results out of it. I <laughs> don't know. You know, it's kind of weird to think of it in those ways, but that's that's what we're doing here. We're manipulating, and, and this is going to be a fundamental aha moment for some of you. The minute you do enough of these, and you one day take the leap from, I'm working with a piece of software, because I had this moment. I'm working with a piece of software to, I'm manipulating a thing, an entity of some kind, right? Whatever it is, the thing is that you're manipulating. I'm manipulating this thing. I have manipulated this thing. All right, let me, I'm still running the cycles, just checking it out. So what you're seeing me here with the regenerate, I just do it over and over and over again to make sure it's going to give me everything I want. Um, and it's been very consistent. But but the point at the point where you make that mental jump and and 
some people will never make it and they will never achieve the heights of AI understanding that we have, that you have. I mean, the, just the fact that you're listening to this means that you're already on another level because you're making the effort to understand the system. And once you begin making that effort and once you begin doing enough of these, their moment will come when you'll realize that you're, you know, and for me, it, it was when I was just talking to it like I was talking to a person. At some point, I stopped treating it like a piece of software and it just became another person that I was talking to. And it literally is like that for me right now. I'm having it do this. I'm just saying, do it again, do it again, do it again, right? It's a person that never gets tired, never sleeps, is always ready to help me whenever I need help. And it will become that for you as well. And the way you get the most out of that is by mastering your prompt engineering skills. And CoStar is going to help you get there. All right, so uh, enough preaching, though. I, I think we're in pretty good shape here. Hopefully you guys are cool with this. You kind of see what's going on here. Um, and hopefully you feel like now with part one and now part two under your belt that you can go forth and do great things with prompt engineering. When it comes down to it, the best prompt engineers are the ones that are doing it every day day now if you don't have a job that allows you to do it every day and many of us don't heck even i don't do full-on production level prompts every day that's okay make sure you're immersing yourself in it in other ways right the, the way i deal with it is i use it for everything else i use it in my daily life i use it for you know when i'm looking up something when i'm driving not literally while i'm driving but you know I, and i've given this example before I, I was behind a truck the other day and i click a picture of some words i didn't understand and asked chat gpt what it meant i was sitting at the light why not when you begin immersing yourself in these things the faster that leap will happen and the quicker you'll understand how to manipulate or maybe put a better way how to collaborate with the large language model all right one last side note before we end it's almost 30 minutes um and i do want to say this the skills i'm teaching you here are applicable and they do work across llms somewhat but remember each llm has its own idiosyncrasies and so I find that a lot of time, particularly as I'm starting to use Gemini more, I, and not necessarily in a good way, just be, uh, it's still like 90-10. Gemini has a way to go. 1.0 is kind of brutal sometimes. But I do find myself using it for certain tasks, uh, and particularly my YouTube videos and stuff. And as I find myself using it, I'm finding things that... that I would think would be hard to do or easier to do in Gemini and things that are just brain dead simple to do in ChatGPT from a prompt perspective are like super hard to do in Gemini. So it is, at least so far for me, it is not the case that your prompt engineering mastery transfers directly to other LLMs. You will have to invest time and energy into learning the nuances of the LLM. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that most of it will transfer, but not all of it. And keep that in mind. Uh, let me see if I can do an example here real quick before we close out. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Gemini. Um, and let me just pop in a prompt at Gemini. Let me take one of those prompts that we had. And, and let's just see if we can get the same kind of results here. Here's a Facebook post prompt, right? Pop it into Gemini. See what Gemini can do for us. Let's see what kind of result we get from Gemini. See there? It's, it's pretty good. It's doing it. We're not getting all the cute emojis and stuff, but we didn't specifically ask for those. So, again, it's, it's coming over. It's doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's kind of... I'm not happy with the way it's laying it out, 
necessarily, although it's pretty easy to copy and paste. I'd probably tweak it a little bit. I don't like all this. And here's your hashtags, and here's your call to act. No, no, no. It just needs to flow. Why didn't it turn my link into an actual link? Um, don't know. So there's a lot of limitations, right, going on here. Let's take a look at some of the drafts. But this is what I mean. This is what I'm talking about when you go to other LLMs. It'll be really, really close, but not exactly what you're looking for. These are all kind of the same. Actually, no, I don't like that one. No, this one's okay. Yeah, so neat stuff. Neat stuff. Anyway, that's it, boys and girls. We will uh, end up there. By the way, last thing, I did include a link to all the websites I visit, visited as reference points. Um, tons of articles on how to use CoStar. Uh, some of them were great. Some of them really weren't that great. Uh, all of them, though, I learned a little something from. If you're, you know, you want to dig through that list, go for it. I basically took all that knowledge and consolidated it into this this couple sessions that we did. So you really don't need to. But I thought some of you might be interested in, in seeing what my process is like in some of the places I visit to get some information. So feel free to go nuts. And with that said, this is Zane, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.